students, Dr. Vic here, and I wanted to go into um, some of the choices around the uh, labor market for physicians, some difficult calculation problems that we see in this chapter. And um, overall, it's a presentation of um, one of the key tools to human and health capital is net present value how you value investments in either financial instruments or careers or your health uh, investments right now, costs right now that play out over time. So we, this has a particular application to the returns to medical training. Okay, so when you're thinking about uh, perhaps you want to be a doctor versus other things, let's throw out uh, non-financial aspects of it. <clears throat> let's say all else being equal, um, you'd be particularly talented in something, um, uh, being a doctor, equally talented somewhere else. Um, you have equal desires across the board for, for being a doctor and perhaps one other potential career. So you have these two careers possibilities that um, in terms of interest and non-financial things might give you uh, equal uh, happiness. But let's look at the costs and benefits, the economic, financial costs and benefits of each, and at least you can weigh those, okay? Then you can make a decision on other things, but weighing the financial decisions is what we wanna do here. So let's lay out a few things. Um, <clears throat> first off, medical school is costly, all right? Uh, medical school is costly, so compared to lots of other careers, uh, medical school is going to really have a lot of upfront costs. Um, whereas other careers, you won't be in school as long, um, you won't be going into debt. So one thing about medical school is it has all these upfront costs, but you're gonna have high earnings um, later in life. Okay, so these high earnings later in their life, that's kind of the trade-off that we want to consider. Whereas other careers, you might have lower earnings, but they start earlier. Okay, and of course we want to weigh all these other career opportunities. So we're looking at the cost of med school, the benefits from being a doctor, but we can't forget about opportunity costs. And that's what we're talking about here, opportunity costs. Um, if you're spending five years in medical school, six years in medical school, you're not earning money in another career. So um, we want to consider all these things in our economic analysis of this. One other thing that's particularly troublesome is this problem of time, right? You have these costs right now, but you have future benefits on down the road. Well, the thing is, I have two things here. PV stands for present value. Present value, the present value of something is what you're experiencing now. Um, you go to the store and you pay for a pack of gum or pay for a meal at the restaurant. You're paying it in money that uh, buys you something right now in the present. That's not the same as the value of any of these things a year down the line, 20 years down the line. That would be talking about the future value of something. The future value of something and the present value of something aren't going to be equal. These are going to change over time for lots of reasons, such as inflation. They're going to change over time because you have opportunity costs of holding that money. If I think about um, buying a stick of gum this year versus next year, I could uh, say I'm going to save up and buy that stick of gum. Or let's think about a car, right? I could start saving up money to buy a car next year, but I could be doing other stuff with that money, okay? So it's, and also my perception, okay, our preferences, the preferences of, of time and my situation, okay? My situation may be that I need to buy a car now. I can't wait uh, in the future, even if it would be less costly for me, okay? The time, the preference and the situation, you may value something more, much more now Okay, um, so all these factors coming together, we have to find a way to equate these, present value and future values. And the way we do this is we use delta, the discount factor delta, okay? So we're gonna have some kind of uh, future value, 
of something. Well, we're gonna multiply it by this discount factor delta, okay? And that is going to be the, the amount that allows us to um, equally weigh, equally look at present values and future values. In other terms, in other, uh, in other words, it allows us to weight future values in a way we can experience in them now. So for example, um, you would um, look at, um, you would weight things in the past to account for inflation. Um, you, you have a multiplier there so you can consistently look at uh, dollar values over time. And that's what we're doing essentially here. Okay, so this is called the discount factor. Okay. <clears throat> the discount factor is related, we want to be able to relate it to an actual market rate, okay? And so the discount factor can be translated into 1 over 1 plus the discount rate, okay? So R is the discount rate, all right? And so we want to be able to um, think about uh, rates being in... Uh, uh, and comparable to other things we're going to use, but they're also related to our preferences. Okay, so a patient person is going to have a discount rate that uh, a discount factor that is closing in on one. Okay, that's for someone who is patient. As that closes in on one, the discount rate becomes very low, comes close to zero. All right, it'll never be exactly one or zero. Um, but the opposite way is someone who is has a very low <clears throat> discount factor. They don't care so much about um, things in the future. They're more concerned with things now. So I'd say that person is more impatient or future oriented, okay? And then that person would have a rate that is much higher a rate would be near one for the impatient person. Okay, so you want to play, get your mind around that, um, comparing different people and what they are. All right, so let's move to this next part. And I want to show the problem, what we're trying to solve here, is we want to see why someone chooses or doesn't choose a career in medicine. And so what we're starting off with here is we're gonna pretend like there's four time periods. You could think of these as decades, okay? But four time periods. Um, and I have these listed across here. So T is equal to zero means that we're talking about now, okay? Um, T is equal to 1 means the next time period, maybe 10, 10 years out. 2, um, the time period after that. And 3, the, the end of our careers, the last time period in our careers. And I have two what I call cash flows. One for being a doctor and one for being a sports star. So let me explain these. Being a doctor, my first time period now, if I decide to be a doctor, I'm going to go into debt. This is a negative. I'm going to go into debt negative five. You could think of these as thousands of dollars or something like that, hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever you want to do. But this first time period, I'm going to go into debt, quite a bit of debt, okay? The time period after that, though, I'll start earning a little bit of money, perhaps when I'm... Um, um, just starting out, I don't have a client base or something like that. And then two time periods out, I'm going to start earning a lot of money when I have established practice. And three time periods out, I'll continue that, uh, that pace of a high career, relatively high career salary. Okay. But let's think, okay, given my interests and my talents, perhaps there is an alternative career that equally appeals to me in non-financial ways. Maybe I have a lot of um, talent in football or tennis or uh, basketball or something, and I decide to be a sports star. Okay, so I've had my college career. Maybe I've been done well both academically. I could get into med school. I've done good in uh, my sports career, and I could go pro. Okay, the, pro, the cash flow benefits of being pro are much different. 
I don't have to go to school. I, I come out and I'll, I'd be earning immediately a very high salary. But my sports career will be relatively short. And so the next three time periods, I wouldn't be earning money from my sports career. Okay, I'd be retired early or whatever. So how do we, how do we consider these two hypotheticals and weigh these? Well, we use the, the financial tool and method of net present value. Okay, net present value here allows us to um, look at, we want to, first we want to calculate all of these cash flows over time and compare them. And we want to look and see if the benefits basically outweigh the costs. Is the MPV positive or not? And um, here we want to, the MPV allows us to um, consider these over time. So remember, since these are over time, we want, to, um, we want to know a couple of things here. One, we're going to look t is, from t is equal to zero to our, our far future time period. So here, our first time period is zero, okay? And our far future time period is three. And we're going to, this is the summation sign, sigma. We're going to add up this term right here. And this term is our uh, delta. So that's the discount factor times whatever uh, I of T re refers to these financial cash flows. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the, the NPV for MD and for sports stars. Okay, one thing we also have to know, so we know the times, we know the cash flows for each. One thing we don't know is what is the discount rate or the discount factor. And let's say that the discount factor we're starting off with is 0.95, OK? 